Would you say it's your life task to teach? No. <laughs> How and when did you know that you should become or that you are determined to be a non-dual teacher? After the I and all the stories have fallen away, or did you already think about that before? Thanks for asking this, answering this question. Um, no, I certainly do not see it as my life ambition to teach at all. Um, no, 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 no. So that's a no. <laughs> um, I, I never, ever, ever, ever imagined that I would be a non-dual teacher. Um, and even my teacher, Roger, who some of you watch, told me that I would be a ne never be a teacher because I wasn't clear. Not clear, like with awakening and stuff, but clear intellectually that my mind is too creative and the way I describe things is too chaotic. And I just believed what he said. Like, I was like, yeah, fair enough. I am. Um, I do dart from this issue to that issue. Um, like, a, like, I'm not logical, I'm more creative. And I, was, I was, didn't take it as an insult. I was like, fair enough. And I, I used to really enjoy being with Roger because he would do the teaching and I would sit there and listen and I could just like chill. And there was no pressure on me to have to answer anyone's questions or do anything. So no, I never saw that. And I really don't like being the center of attention in public. Uh, I tend to veer towards more being in the background. And so I find it a little uncomfortable sometimes when I'm teaching, not when I'm teaching, like sitting, um, like on the stage and teaching, but more afterwards, like, um, like if you're doing an event and sitting like in a group and then everyone begins to focus on you, I'd be like, so, and I used to really enjoy that about Roger, like we'd go anywhere and like he, he was such a talker that wherever we went, he would take over and I wouldn't have to do anything. I could just, you know, like chip in whenever I felt like it. There was like no focus on me to have to do anything. So no, there was no interest in that. I feel like a little bit, I got tricked into teaching. That sounds really weird. Like, um, like life, it kind of like uh, got pushed onto me. And um, like, so in the beginning, when I started uploading videos and started talking to my friend, it was just like a passion of my heart. Like it was, it was, it wasn't about teaching. There wasn't an imagination that other people were listening. It was just like my heart wanted to explode with love, and it and it felt like it needed to to let it out verbally. Um, I don't draw art. There was just this explosion wanting to come out of love and it felt like making love to people. And, and then it became popular and then it just kind of became a thing and then people kept inviting me and I kept thinking that I wanted to do something else. But because I kept getting invited, I couldn't, I wanted to set up like a dog walking business and like an animal business. And because people kept inviting me and the way it was set up, I couldn't set up the other business because I was traveling a lot. And um, so then it happened. Uh, but there's many variations to that story. So in the beginning, it wasn't like I wanted to teach. It was just that my heart was like bursting. It was so, I couldn't believe it, that life could be like I'd searched for so many years and I'd seek for so many years and I had this massive explosion and saw life so differently and I just couldn't believe it. It was so wonderful. But it wasn't really about teaching people as such. In the first couple of years, like um, there was an interest to see like, what effect it did on me and interest to see that like, go in that direction. But then... I, I wanted to go off and work with animals. So it was something that kind of happened. Um, and I feel like I got pushed into it by life. 
but it was never an intention. But now I do it, and that I've been doing it now for nearly 10 years. I just love it. And I'm so happy that life pushed me in that way. Like I, I can't, I can't imagine a better job. Like, like it's such an amazing job being able to speak about this with people and doing one-to-one -one sessions with people and doing public talks. I think that that's my least favorite doing public talks. I like it in the moment when I'm doing it, but I don't like all the socializing so much afterwards. I don't like being the center of attention. It's not so comfortable for me. Yeah. So that that's kind of happens. There must have been, I think deep down, there's like a, a deep desire in me, which I wasn't conscious of before I started teaching to express love. And I think this, this is the way this body does it, is this is speaking about non-duality. It's like an expression of love. And so that's why I attracted it towards myself, but I didn't actually initially think of it and imagine it in this way. And I think that I'm like, um, I think like I'm a more energetic love teacher than I am like an intellectual clarity teacher, like you get different ones. So someone like Rupert or Roger are more about clarity intellectually um, and this energetic presence, which is really beautiful. Um, whereas for me, I feel like it's more like love, like it comes from here. Like when I sit in silence in the beginning, I'm waiting for it to erupt here. Like, and it's not like I'm sitting there thinking, like, what am I gonna say? I try to drop in ideas to get myself going. It's like, woo. Um, well, yeah, and it was after a big energetic shift that I started teaching. Like this, when I was um, 31, I, I had a big, oh no, maybe I was 30 actually. Yeah, I think I was 30. When I was 30, I had this big energetic shift, and um, I started teaching when I was 31, but like, uh, so, yeah. And I don't feel qualified, I don't feel enlightened, I don't feel, I don't feel not qualified, and I don't feel not enlightened, I just don't feel or think about those things, it seems silly thing to think about. And I don't think that I've got an eye or not got an eye, like, um, or seeking or not seeking, like I'm open to the possibility that those stuff could still be happening. Like I, I find it so hard to know where I am. The only thing that I can claim is that this thing happened when I was 30 and it never seems to leave. Like it's, it's um, always there, but my character still has issues and still goes through things. And, um, Yeah. And in the beginning, it wasn't so obvious that the character was still going through and, and things and changing because I changed so much overnight like this on the human level. So it was unclear to see that like everything felt so empty and blown away. But then, but there are still issues that come up. Like the more that you interact with life, you do business and you have relationships, the more that you, things come up. <laughs> And I don't know what that is, if that's selfing or if that's seeking or not. Um, I get I, the way I phrase it to people is I say that it's like old seeking patterns or old habits and it endlessly expands. But even that, I mean, who knows at the end of the day, we just know we're here and all of it's all of these words are like an attempt to put experience into a form of communication, but we can't at the end of the day. And I don't know what other people's are, experiences are. Like, uh, yeah. So 
So I don't know if that helps. Maybe you're thinking about teaching um, or something like that. And my perspective on it is that it, there are all these like ideas that anybody has about anything like that you need to have had a certain amount of experiences in order to teach or you don't need to or you need to be like this or you need to be like that is all mind stuff like I'm of the belief that you could have that you could have like a really unenlightened teacher and there could be freedom it's all about the attitude of the apparent student like it like life is your teacher not a person so all these things I don't you don't need to get involved in like it will happen or not. Like to me, the best way in which to act on the human level is to move towards that which makes you expand, which is quite obvious really. So if it makes you feel expanded to teach, then that feels like the right thing to do. As long as you know what the, I mean by expanded, like that you open up. Like it feels logical because that's the way the whole of life is working, like our, everything is constantly expanding, the universe is expanding, things are expanding, evolution is expanding and becoming more complex. And, and I feel like, like the best way in which we can be on the human level is to move towards that which makes us expand, which isn't easy because it goes against logic, it goes against good and bad and it goes against what other people deem as right or wrong. It's like coming out of the mind and going more to the sensation and the experience. Um, yes. And I would, say, I would say that teaching makes me feel expansive. It can be difficult sometimes because like you're talking with people that are really suffering. So that can be sad. But like overall, I'd say it makes me feel really expansive talking about it, especially when I talk about like really hardcore non-duality. That's my real passion. Yes. And just remember, nothing really matters. It's not really serious. Okay.